A commonly believed myth is that you have to either be a professional coder or have a degree in computer science to be able to start making video games. That you need some sort of formalized education. That's not true. Granted, it really helps, and I believe that the rigor of college is a fantastic way to develop a stronger work ethic and learning skills, but the specifics of the degree might not be as important as you think. When I first started learning to make video games over four years ago, I honestly hadn't looked at coding in nearly a decade, and honestly, I was terrible at it whenever I had to code in my undergrad degree. Not to mention, I kind of hated it. I didn't understand how coding worked, debugging was a total nightmare, and the feeling I had in college watching my peers solve problems in 15 minutes while I took over three hours to get through the same content was just super disheartening. Even worse, I sometimes just outright failed to complete my coding assignments at all. Anyway, that's in the past. Once I decided to start learning to program video games, my relationship with coding changed, and now I truly believe you can absolutely learn to code and develop games regardless of your background. Background. It's like the Pixar movie Ratatouille. Anyone can cook. Anyone can code. You just have to follow Remy's example and be willing to put the work in. So in this video, I'll be going over the very first steps you need to start making your own video games. If you're a total beginner, you're in the right place. So the first step to make your own games is to choose a game engine. Some developers code things from scratch or develop their own engine, but honestly, that's the harder way to go, and you can almost always make the same caliber of game with less effort using an engine. There are tons of game engines on the market that I won't be able to fully cover in this video, so I'll just stick to the top engines being discussed right now, which are Unity, Unreal, and Godot. I would also include Game Maker Studio 2 in the discussion, not only because it's the engine that I personally use, but it's also behind several really successful games. Games like Hyper Light Drifter, Undertale, Spelunky, and Pizza Tower. Hopefully one day my game Tethergeist will make the list of successful games, but I guess time will just have to tell. Whatever the case is, Game Maker is just a fantastic engine that I think deserves more attention than it sometimes gets. Anyway, when you're choosing an engine, my advice to you is to first determine the types of games you want to make, then choose the engine that best fits your creative vision. I should also point out that all of these engines have free to use versions, so you can really test all of them out before you spend anything. So let's start with Unity, which is arguably the most most popular engine, partially because of how long it's been on the market, and largely because of how good it is at accommodating just about any type of genre of game. Want to make a 3D game? Unity is great. 2D game? Unity is also great. Looking for a deep well of tutorials? You'll find them in Unity. And tons of great games have been made in this engine. Games like Hollow Knight, Subnautica, Cuphead, and Outer Wilds. If you're on the fence about what kind of game you want to make, you honestly can't go wrong choosing to learn Unity. Now, Unreal Engine is also a really popular pick, and it is incredible at generating high-resolution 3D games. It's common to see some of the most flashy and visually appealing games come out of this engine. You just have to be willing to accept that it's also the engine behind Fortnite, but if you're able to look past that, it's an awesome engine to use. This too is the source of some fantastic games. Games like Rocket League, Senua's Sacrifice, Minecraft Dungeons, and Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Next, there's Godot, which is a fully open-source engine that will never ask for a revenue share from the games you make. Granted, the other engines also have very reasonable revenue share models, often not requiring any share until you've sold many, many copies of your game. Each engine has their own approach to it, but that's a topic for a separate video. Anyway, Godot is the scrappy but powerful little sibling that has really been making waves as of late. It's great for both 2D and 3D games, and from what I understand, it has a really welcoming community of fellow users. And then of course there's Game Maker, which is the engine I'm using. Game Maker specializes in 2D games, and if you want to make a 2D game, I believe it's the best engine on the market. Despite not being designed for 3D games, Games, it's still powerful enough to create truly excellent and commercially successful games while also being beginner friendly and just a joy to work in. Not to mention Game Maker has been continually improving the engine while communicating an exciting vision for its future, which honestly is why I was super jazzed when they emailed us directly and asked if they could sponsor this video. How awesome is that? Game Maker is an engine I genuinely love, so it wasn't a hard decision to say yes. I've been using Game Maker for the past four years and over three of those years have been spent making Tethergeist in it. Like I've said earlier, it's been a joy to work in. It was super easy to learn, and it's 100% free to download for personal use right now. So you could literally start using Game Maker as soon as this video is over. And if you want to eventually sell your games commercially, they have extremely indie-friendly licensing options. Beyond that, they have a great community of fellow Game Maker developers who are more than happy to help answer any questions you have and collaborate on projects. From personal experience, I've found this community to be very welcoming, kind, and helpful. Not to mention, Game Maker has a solid selection of official tutorials, videos, and documentation. It's just a great engine all around. I'll share a link to everything you need to get started 
started in Game Maker in the description below. Okay, so once you've picked an engine, you need to set up a plan to learn it. Everyone learns better through different mediums and at a different pace, so you'll need to be self-aware and choose a venue and timeline that works well for you. With that in mind, I can at least tell you what worked well for me, and hopefully that can give you a basic idea of a good schedule and approach to learning your engine. When I started learning Game Maker Studio, I found a few tutorial series on YouTube that worked really well for me. The Sarah Spaulding tutorial series on making a platformer was particularly valuable to me, not only because I wanted to make a platformer, but also because Sarah does an excellent job not only showing you the code, but explaining how it works every step of the way, which is a really important part of getting the most out of tutorials. Hold yourself to a high standard as you learn the material. Don't just copy and paste the code they show you in the tutorial. Take time to really internalize what the code is doing and think about ways you can apply that code in different situations. And don't be afraid to break things. Try writing your own code along the way and learn from your mistakes. It's just like learning to ride a bike. You have to take the training wheels off eventually and crashing is just part of the process. It's also important to be persistent. Find a schedule that works for you and stick with it. I spent an hour a day for about four months in Game Maker before I felt like I could really start making games on my own. Don't be discouraged if you don't learn everything as quickly as you'd like. The key is that you stay consistent. Another extremely valuable resource for learning your engine, and honestly a resource you'll be referring to all the time in general, is your engine's official documentation. Every big engine on the market has documented everything you need to know about the engine, from functions to editor guides to asset management. The documentation is the end-all be-all of what your engine can do, and it's always up to date with the latest information since it's managed by the company directly. It's also very common for the documentation to include examples of how functions are used, and they're usually written in a sort of tutorial-type format to make the content not only clear, but easier to learn in general. Always, always refer to the documentation. And my last bit of advice for learning your engine is to stay actively engaged with the online community of fellow developers using the same engine. There are plenty of forums online, many of which are hosted by the company directly, where fellow developers ask and answer questions about making their games. If you run into a snag while learning your engine or working on your game, chances are someone has run into the same issue and has asked about it online. I found that more often than not, other developers have already provided answers, or at least they have good tips on where to start looking for solutions. It's a really cool thing about indie game development as a whole. We're all in this together, and fellow devs are happy and willing to help. Okay, the next step is to establish a work process, which includes learning other tools outside of your engine. This is likely something that you already started as you began learning your engine, but it's such a critical part of development, I feel like it bears mentioning. Learning to make video games takes more than just learning to code. Games require sound effects music, artwork, stories, and marketing. All of these aspects of your game will require you to either learn how to do them yourself or find friends whose skill sets complement yours. Whatever your approach is, just understand that there's a lot that goes into game development. Using Tethergeist as an example, my dev partners Noah and Ray use Asprite for pixel art, Photoshop for color editing, I use Logic Pro for music, I use a small studio setup in my home office with professional microphones for sound effects, Adobe Audition for sound effect editing, Discord for communication, Miro for collaboration, collaborative whiteboarding sessions, Trello for project management, Squarespace for hosting our website, and of course, Game Maker Studio 2 for coding the game. And the list goes on. Now, I should point out that I don't list all of these tools to try to scare you away from making a video game. On the contrary, I think they're all really fun and exciting parts of making games. I just want to bring to your attention that each tool and process requires expertise beyond what you might have originally scoped for game development. So keep that in mind as you establish your development process. Now, my last beginner step for learning to make video games might be a bit of a curve ball, but I can't stress enough how powerful it is to really learn the ropes of game development. While you're learning and for years after, participate in Game Jams. For anyone unaware, Game Jams are events often hosted online in which a theme is provided and game developers have a short time, usually just days, to create a game that follows the theme. Some Game Jams are competitive and players vote on their favorites to see which games win the jam. Now, you might be tempted to think that you should wait until you feel confident making games before participating in Game Jams, but don't do that to yourself. You should be participating in game jams as soon as you feel even remotely close to being able to make the simplest of games. And here's why. Game jams are an incredible way to give you external motivation to deliver something functional. And since they're generally such short time frames, you learn pretty quickly how to prioritize what matters most to your deliverable and what you can afford to skip. And since everyone participating knows the developers have only a short time to make a game, players are understanding of games that are small in scope and sometimes buggy, which is another reason game 
game jams are a great learning tool. You get hands-on experience making mistakes, and you're able to learn from those mistakes on small projects with small consequences. After all, game jams are just a few days. And lastly, game jams are an excellent source of inspiration. Commonly, you'll get a theme that maybe only yields mildly interesting ideas, but occasionally you can strike gold, which is kind of what happened with my team when we made Tethergeist for the GMTK game jam in 2021. The theme was joined together, and it's in that jam that we came up with the idea for the core mechanics of Tethergeist. Then to our surprise, we scored 10th in the popular vote out of over 5,000 entries, and from there we knew we were onto something special. It started as a silly little game made in just 48 hours, and has now turned into a huge labor of love as we've spent over three years developing Tethergeist into a feature-length game. Anyway, all of that is to say, get out there and participate in game jams. And that about wraps things up for my advice on how to start making video games. Pick an engine, learn it, establish a process that works for you, and participate in game jams. I suppose one final step is to follow through, which admittedly is the hardest one. I've been working on games for over four years now, and every day I still feel like I learn something new. Be resilient, and little by little, you'll be able to make great things. If Tethergeist is a game that looks interesting to you, we'd be honored to have you head over to Steam and play our free demo. If you like it, consider wishlisting it. And of of course, if you liked this video and want to keep in the loop on our progress, make sure to subscribe here on YouTube. And lastly, we've got a Discord server where you can chat with us directly and hang out with the rest of our community. All of the links you'll need are in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.